to succeed in life, we are told from we are young that we should analyze the situation, do some research, define our goals, make a realistic plan and go out and do it. And what we plan to achieve should, of course, be meaningful and hopefully have value for mankind. And if we do all this correctly, we will not fail and we will hopefully gain honor. A good example of a huge and really successful project is the moon landing. But to me, landing on the moon is the perfect definition of a meaningless achievement. <laughs> Think about it for a second. I mean, what difference did it make that a handful of men were jumping around on this big rock in outer space 50 years ago? Sure, they collected some gravel and they took some pictures and of course it made the Americans feel happy because they won the race for the moon. But the project itself, investing all these resources and time just to get a pocket full of gravel in return. What a crazy project. But this crazy project had a lot of spin-off effects that changed the world. Like the, the technology revolution in communication, in navigation, in robotics, in cybernetics, computer science, and rocket science, you name it. These spin-offs changed mankind. I will tell you a parallel story about my own moon landing. Although, of course, just a micro fraction in size and importance. I was working as a CEO in a computer company and was overlooking a bunch of engineers. That's a nice job, by the way. <laughs> and one day, a guy came up to me and asked, can you make me a billiard table that can be used on board a ship. Think about it. A table full of billiard balls on the table, on board a ship, in the waves. Sounds crazy. To, I mean, billiard is a game that requires an absolutely horizontal, in-level surface of the table. And you absolutely expect the billiard balls not to move when you don't expect them to. To design and build a billiard table for use on board a ship seemed to be an extreme demanding project. And is there really a need to play billiard on board a ship. But we, my colleagues and I, crazy engineers as we are, we did it anyway, because we loved the idea. We were mesmerized by the technical challenge. And we dreamt during the nights about the attention we would get when we hopefully could display this new product to the world. And I believe we dreamt a little during the days as well. <laughs> but we did not analyze the value proposition for the customers, nor the size of the market for marine pool tables. <laughs> but what we analyzed as engineers were, of course, the technicalities. We made a revolutionary design and produced a stabilized 
pool table, a prototype that we tested on board a local cruise liner. And, wow, it worked. We could play billiard with the strong breeze from the side while the ship was rocking back and forth. Incredible. The balls went straight and came to rest, lying perfectly still. A miracle of engineering. And we were, of course, really proud and happy about this technical success. And now we got ready for the commercial success. So we called several cruise liners, told about this amazing new product, a new world record, never showed before. How many pool tables would you like on board? <laughs> And the answer was zero. <laughs> huh? Not a single table? No, sorry. We had forgotten to ask the customers and mankind, is there really a big need for playing pool in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> Apparently not. But we, we were still full of technical passion. And we had a really big passion for our new baby, our product. We loved it. So we did not throw in the towel. And we continued to try to sell this product for years. And then finally, we managed to get a contract of eight pool tables for four cruise liners that were built. We produced and we installed and they worked and they amused the passengers 24-7. And they still do actually. Discovery Channel picked up a YouTube video showing this amazing pool table. And they made the following program showing our product in action and how it works. Let's have a look. With almost two million hits, this mind-bending game of pool has thrown our scientists off balance. So the table's moving, but the balls are staying still. What is going on here? How does that work? Not a cue, Chris. Helen, right. is this clip on the level? This looks so weird because the pool table is on a cruise ship and the whole room, including the camera person, are rocking back and forth on the ocean waves. So how is this pool table counteracting the motion of the ocean? To sense the motions of the ship and the pool table, the pool table is dotted with little devices called accelerometers. These accelerometers are able to measure the magnitude and directions of the motion and send that information to a central computer. Which execute the motions to keep the table leveled. So the accelerometers sense the movement of the ocean. But what's keeping the table level? The table has two linear actuators inside it. A linear actuator moves something in one direction. So the table has one linear actuator to move it back and forth and another linear actuator to move it side to side. The calculations and corrections are done so quickly that the balls don't have a chance to move, meaning you can carry on your game on even the roughest of seas. An incredible innovation on the open ocean. But just remember to watch out for pool sharks. Fascinating about Discovery Channel, but they didn't get that we were from Norway, so they put New Zealand on. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Then one day, something happened that really changed our mindset. An engineer on board got really, really seasick. And he was so bad that they thought about taking him on shore with a helicopter. But then one bright head suggested, why not put this guy on one of those silly pool tables? Let him have a sleep there. And so he did, closed his eye, 
fell asleep. And after only 15 minutes, he woke up again. And he was completely fresh. And he was so good, he could work for several hours before he had to go back on the table for new 15 minutes. <laughs> wow, I mean, Eureka, what have we discovered? Perhaps curing seasickness should be our new mission. Why do we care about pool tables for the few? If we could create a new and very useful product, a stabilized bed that cured seasickness. Finally, an invention for mankind, we thought. We got to work, and not before long, we had designed, produced a stabilized bed, and we managed to sell it to a cruise liner. And they put it in the top cabin, the Commodore suite. And it worked. <laughs> and it really cured seasickness. And the passengers, the feedback from them, were all very positive. So the bed made a difference. And we were thrilled. And we got a meeting with the management. And we asked, how many stabilized beds do you want on board? <laughs> Excuse me? What? Zero? <laughs> not a single bed? Why? We could not believe what we heard. I mean, it worked. But they said, we cannot sell a service or a product that cures something we never talk about. <laughs> Have you heard a cruise liner talk about seasickness? No. They never use that word in that business. <laughs> what to do? I mean, we had developed a perfect product that probably 30% of mankind would benefit from during their cruise vacations. But the cruise liners, they didn't dare to talk about it. Therefore, we failed in that market. But these guys, these guys know about seasickness. They have family and friends on board, and some of them, of course, suffer from seasickness. And they talk about it, and they know about it, and they would like to do something about it. And they love gadgets. And Expensive? That is often positive. <laughs> so suddenly, we had narrowed our mission to cure a small fraction of mankind, <laughs> the one that is suffering from seasickness in luxury yachts. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> but what? we succeeded. Because we had finally found a market that both could use, want to use, and could pay. So now we are looking into new applications in new markets, all based on our stabilizing technology, and mind you, financed by our commercial success in this luxury yacht market. So now, we are also on commercial vessels and offshore platforms. For instance, we are designing stabilized platforms for working space, or simply a stabilized desktop. Impro improving the comfort and working areas on board, and thereby improving also the quality of the work done. So this really means something. And finally, we have gone onshore, on the road. We have achieved 
a really big project, really big achievement. And that is the ultimate spin-off from our pool table project. We develop a stabilized stretcher in an ambulance, taking care of both the patient and the nursing personnel during transport. In this way, we avoid the patient to get car sick and throwing up because they're not thrown from side to side during curves. And when you are under transport in an ambulance as a patient, that is normally because you don't feel that well. I mean, you are either at critical health or seriously wounded, or perhaps some part of your body should not be moved at all, or you should be stable. And then you really not need to get this extra burden from stress and pain, car sickness, and throwing up. Our investigations has so far indicated that they indicate that using a stabilized stretcher in an ambulance during transport, in addition to increase the comfort for the patient during the ride. It also improved the quality of the medical treatment, and sometimes substantially. So this way, we could save you both money and potentially save lives. Finally, our stabilizing technology is finally and truly helping mankind. And it all started with a silly pool table. <laughs> the stable project has taken years, many years, and when we started, we did not dare or care to analyze the market and, or find out if there was a need for our products. And if we had followed the book on business and did, done all the analysis and asked all the right people and followed their advice, we would never have started this project. And then we would not have had stabilized platforms for working environment, offshore, or medical transport. The valuable, the valuable spin-offs would never have happened. My point is, maybe playing pool in the middle of the ocean is not more valuable for mankind than that pocket full of gravel from the moon. But it is the more or less unplanned spin-offs that came after that provided the value. Be bold. Support the projects out there, even if you not, do not know right away where it's going to end. Because you never know when a valuable spin-off will change mankind next time. Thank you.